testing, testing, testing. One, two, three. How is my camera? There we go. It's getting lighter. It's getting lighter. Where's my comment section at? There it is. If you can hear me loud and clear, put a one in the chat. We about to go in today. We about to go in today. What's today's day? Today is the 7th of April. I'm out here chilling in Brazil. Had a great weekend. But there's some things on the internet that I've seen that I have to cover. I have to get off my chest. So I figured people said they wanted another live stream, a classic MT live stream. Uh, bring it back one good time on the Sunday. And that's what I'm going to do. That's what I'm going to do, brother. I will just let's, let's talk about a little bit about Brazil first. And then we're going to get into the uh, to the meat and potatoes here. I'm having a time of my life here in Brazil. The cheat code is earning your money in dollars. Either through remote work, online business investments, retirement, pension, or whatever the case is, and spending it somewhere else. The United States is great for earning money. But what we're seeing recently with the cost of living, the cost of rent, driving everywhere, right? Gas money, car payment, insurance. Like, I don't have any of that. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? Look, I'm in Brazil, earning in dollars, saving so much money monthly. This is the cheat code. And it doesn't have to be Brazil. It could be Thailand, Philippines, Spain, Portugal. Um, we got brothers in Costa Rica, Nicaragua, Lima, Peru, Ecuador. So that is the move. I'm telling you, like, my... It's, it's getting crazy out here in Brazil, man. And I'm going to just tell y'all something about uh, Brazilian girls, something that I noticed. I, like, I have, like, a little rotation going on right here. I got three phones that I'm checking. Um, these A lot of these Brazilian girls, they be disappearing for months. And then they come back talking about, oh, I miss you, and I want to see you, and where you been, and all this type of stuff. So it's crazy how they just be ro revolving around. You don't even... You don't even really got to be pursuing them like that. Once you start mingling and chit-chatting, all you got to do is just sit back and just wait for the notifications. Last night, I met a guy from my Patreon. Randomly. Okay, randomly. We were just, I, was at a, I was at a venue, and I, I was approached. I, was appro I get approached quite a bit here from everybody. White guys, Japanese guys, like older, younger um, my face is starting to get popular, especially here in Brazil, especially at airports, popular destinations, so on and so forth. But he was, he's in my Patreon and I almost shed a tear. He's actually not the first person I met on Patreon, but he went through and basically regurg regurgitated all of my talking points that I talk about in my Patreon about not overpaying for certain things. Uh, understanding the economic climate here in Brazil and what you should be paying and what you shouldn't be paying, right? Uh, how to negotiate, the art of negotiation. A lot of brothers don't know how to do that. Standing firm, understanding the local economy. And he was actually showing me his receipts. So basically, what I am saying is working. Okay, and I love and I love to hear that. Uh, I get messages every day of people wanting to hang out. Hey, MT, I'm coming to Brazil. Hey, MT, I'm doing this. I'm coming to Brazil. I can't hang out with everybody, even if you're in my Patreon. So I'm just letting you guys know now that uh, I'm not. I provide a service. I provide an excellent service, I think. Um, but don't come to Brazil expecting that we're going to hang out because there's too many of y'all and I got a lot of things going on. Okay. Can't promise you, but I am ready 
to start cooking. Uh, oh, they, oh, okay. Let, let me let me let's get through the let's get through the comment section real quick. We got the usual suspects in the building: XL Pro, Larry, Larry, uh, Brath Wright, Jeffrey. I'm seeing all types of people: Michael, uh, Pooh Man, CME Hustle. We got the usual suspects in the building. Just the way I like it. Just the way I like it. Shout out to you, Mr. Garza. I see you, Nova Society. We got the usual suspects in the building, and this is just what I like. So as far as the visa requirement, entering Brazil, it has been unofficially announced that they're going to postpone it for U.S. residents until 2025, but it hasn't reflected on the U.S. NBC website. It hasn't reflected on Brazilian websites, so we're just kind of like in a hurry up and wait perspective. That's kind of where we're at right now, okay? But what I want to do now, we're going to start cooking. I'm ready to cook. We at what? Six minutes in, I'm ready. Are y'all ready? We're going to start cooking because I, I got a whole lot of stuff to go through. If your boy MT is fired up, you know what I'm saying, and you, and you want to support the content, uh, if you want to support my movement, if you want to see what really goes down, check out the Patreon. If you like what I'm saying in this live stream, drop a super chat, $1, $2, whatever the case is, okay? As you can see, I got my Shopify store set up, okay? I have uh, some essential travel guides. We can call them travel guides. They're video, videos, PDFs, calculators, all that type of stuff. Uh, I will say this. If you just got your passport, if you just got your passport, you do not need it is not, I'm not going to lie to you, it's not necessary to get a consultation from me. It ain't necessary to buy my book. It's not necessary for you to buy my uh, travel guides. It ain't necessary. However, if you want to expedite the process, if you want to come to a country and already be a professional on how to move and how to shake, then I seriously consider my, uh, my products and my services, okay? I will tell you that I would love to have a, if I'm going to Argentina for an example, right? I am a travel person. I, would, I wish there was a version of me in Argentina that had the lowdown that I can call and that I can pay for the service. That way, when I go to Argentina, I'm not starting from scratch. Here in Brazil, Brazil is not a place you want to start from scratch. You know what I'm saying? Uh, Thailand is kind of plug and play. The Philippines, not so much. But in Brazil, I want to be an, you want to be an expert when you come to Brazil. You want to be a you want to get touched down and just be ready to go boom, 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 or you can figure it out yourself. My services are for you to save time when you're on your trip. That's it. Save you time. Also, we talk about finances, even in my Patreon, how to open up a mutual fund, how to open up your, 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 your investments, uh, ETFs, mutual funds, crypto, uh, how to build a budget, what are the best budgeting apps, all the things that you need to sustain your travel. Sustainability is what really what, really what brothers want. Long, longevity. I don't want to do, I got a brother that's leaving Brazil today. You know what I'm saying? He's, he's leaving Brazil today. He's getting on an airplane tonight, and he does not want to leave. He was telling me his story last night, man, talking about how the next trip he wants to stay a lot longer. What is it? He, he, he went down to his plan, and he was talking about how can I stay in Brazil longer? This is what I'm going to do X, Y, and Z, business-wise, all that type of stuff. That's used, that's, that is the first thing that comes to your mind. When you come to places like Brazil, I met a guy last night, another guy. He's in my Voyotic Facebook group, randomly bumped into him, okay? He got here, he, got, he was in Brazil 12 hours, and he's like, I'm already, I'm going to extend my, plane, my, uh, my ticket. For 12, he got here, and within 12 hours, he already knew that he wanted to stay, he wanted to extend his trip. Luckily for him, he works remote. So it's, uh, it, all it is is just calling an airline and pushing your ticket back. But a lot of people don't have that luxury. Okay? So 
Me being in Brazil makes it even more passionate for me. It's even more passionate for me to talk about the things that I want to talk about on Patreon, the things that I can't say on YouTube. That's why I'm always so fired up, because I'm in it. I'm in the thick of things, and I want you guys here too. Not all of you, but some of you, okay? But we're, we're going to see who, who else is in the building, and then we're going to get cracking. All right? Keep doing what you're doing, Scholar. You saved yourself from the West. The visa requirement ain't coming no time soon. Okay, let's go ahead and just get started, bro. I want, I am ready to rock. We're going to start, we're going to start off on a, with, with a light one. And again, I don't remember if I did a video on this or not, but we got to talk about this. And y'all can see me, y'all can see me in the corner right here, can't y'all? Y'all can see your boy NT in the corner. We, we just going to get this video demonetized, man. We got, why don't men, why I don't date a man who makes less than 20K annually? Look at the dysfunction that's going on in the United States, and they get mad at me when I tell y'all to get y'all passport and just leave. Look at, look at this rat that is talking. She's about to do some ninja math to kind of tell y'all on why she wants a man making at least $200,000. And I'm just thinking to myself, you know what you can do with $200,000 in Brazil? Do you know how much you can stretch it out here in Brazil? or Colombia, or any Latin American country, or any, even any, all over the world. But nah, bro, let's go ahead and play this video, because this is, what, she, what does she got to say? Creatures, uh, let me walk through what I just made. Why I won't sleep with a man who makes less than $200,000 a year. Hold on, she, did, you, did you hear what she just said? Why I won't sleep with a man who doesn't make at least $200,000 a year. So we already know from the very beginning, within the first 10 seconds, she's telling you that my box is for sale. Which for me, you guys know how I move. If your box is for sale, I, that's fine with me. Because you guys, I keep it 100 with y'all. Hey, if it's, a good, if it's a good deal, then I'll pay it. I don't give a shit. <laughs> but she's talking about $200,000 a year for that worn out snatch. Please. It ain't happening. Average one bedroom apartment in LA, this is where I live, is $2,800 a month, although my rent is significantly more than this. That means that you have to make three times the rent in order to qualify. That oh, whoa, 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 whoa. So basically, that's the first problem she living in LA. Who told you to live in LA? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You struggling, your rent is due. You know, you 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 guys already know she's a sugar baby. Eighty-four hundred dollars a month before taxes and one hundred eight hundred thousand dollars a year. But hold on, I know what you're thinking. That sounds like a lot of money. Just wait. Men want to do this thing where they want to. Bro, who, who, who is going to finance that? Who's going to finance it, Michael? Michael Elam, you gonna finance that? Shout out to Jeff, the producer, for the first super chat of the day, fifty-five dollars. I appreciate you with that, buddy. Thank you. Okay, but who, who? This is this is who's going to finance this, bro? I'm in Brazil. There's so many beautiful women here in Brazil. CME Hustle knows. I met CME Hustle. He's in the chat. He knows. There's probably a couple other guys in the chat that know. You walking around Copacabana, Ipanema, LeBlanc. Go to the beach. There's so many beautiful women in Brazil. So it doesn't even make any sense. This is a rat, bro. This is not anything And that's special. fine because I want to take my pants off too, but hold on. If we have a little baby, oops, uh, the average two bedroom in Los Angeles is $3,800. That means that you now have to make $11,400 a month, which brings you to $136,800 a year. I know what you're thinking. Oh my God, that's so much money, but wait. You're not really coming home with that $136,800 because you have roughly 30% in taxes, and this is a conservative estimate, okay? Meaning that $41,040 of that is gonna be taken, so your new bring home is gonna be $95,760 a year, but hold on. If we divide that by 52 weeks, that means that you are gonna bring home $1,841.54 weekly, or $7,366 monthly. I know what you're thinking, that's amazing. However, you have benefits. 
Do you know how much benefits are for a family of three on a silver PPO plan? Because be so for real, I am not giving birth in a county hospital, okay? Bro, where's my airplane at? Hold on, y'all remember my airplane sound? Here it is. <laughs> Bro, what is she talking about? Like who, like, brothers are gonna pay that. Some of y'all are unfortunately gonna get caught up in the crossfire, man. That's insanity. That is insanity. Um, let's just pay a higher premium now unless you want to get a bill for $100,000 at the end of the birth, okay? Since a lot of men are visual creatures, uh, let me walk through what I just- Okay, yeah, why I won't- so, so the title to her- so the title she says is why I won't date a man who makes less than 200k annually, but in the video she said why I won't sleep with a man. So we already know what it is. Hey, her price is $200,000 a year. That's a level- that is a super incredible high levels of delusion that you will see in the United States. And this is a three on a scale of one to 10. This is a three. And um, I will not, <laughs> I refuse, I refuse, I refuse, I refuse. Okay. Um, yeah, that's, that's, that's insanity, bro. <laughs> that's insane. Hey, put a one. I want to know what you guys think about this. Are you? Is this chick worth two hundred thousand dollars a month? Yes or no? Is this woman worth two hundred thousand dollars a month? Put it in the comment section. I want to know. Okay. Is she worth two hundred thousand dollars a month? Yes or no? Let a brother know. I'm wait. I'm waiting to hear from y'all. $200,000 a month. Uh, who said yes? Who said, okay, let me see. And if the live stream, if the live stream is too quiet, I can play some music. Let me, cause I, yeah. If the music's too loud, just let me know. But I, I gotta, I gotta, I gotta have a little bit of something, something in the background while I'm cooking, some, some cooking music. You saying no, no, it's making two, no, $200,000 a year. Ronaldo says no, maybe a hundred dollars an hour. <laughs> two hundred thousand in Zimbabwean currency. Nah. So everybody, everybody's saying no. Uh, yeah, but this is crazy. This is this is cuckoo. <laughs> Let me see if I can. Let me see if I can see if somebody here. Uh, this is her right here. Let's go to her Instagram. Come on, man. That's too. That's what. That's what two hundred thousand dollars looks like. That's crazy, bro. And people are gonna get mad at me. MT, why you care about her looks and why you why you work? Hey, that's what brothers want. I mean, she don't look bad in this picture, but this ain't worth no two hundred thousand dollars a year. You know what I'm saying? If you got a chick like this, plastic surgeon up, uh, you know what I'm saying? Asking for, she got some thick legs now. I, uh, hold on, a lot of you brothers probably push back. How many of you brothers just push back? <laughs> hey, a couple of y'all push back on that. A couple of y'all say, you know what? I'll make that 200K. Hmm? What's, what's the deal, bros? She got them legs out now. What's, what's, what's the what's the verdict now? <laughs> ah. <laughs> hey, there you go. I knew somebody was gonna say, "Hey, she's affordable." So, so yeah, I would I would concede. I would concede. Um, 
I keep it I keep it real. She's a foldable. She'll definitely get folded. Um, but we ain't. It's not. We're not. We're not playing the two hundred thousand dollar game. You know what I'm saying? Like if she was in Brazil, she flew out to Brazil. She's like, hey, you know, I'm. I want to get a tour guide. Can you show me around? Oh yeah, I can show you around. I can show you the couch. You know what I'm saying? I can show you my couch for sure. The corner pocket. I can show you this little corner pocket right here. We're just gonna keep it real. But that doesn't mean I'm gonna be trying to wipe her. We ain't trying to do anything longevity. You know what I'm saying? Ain't any of that. But we, I'm not gonna deny it. And that's probably where a lot of brothers are. And I think that's kind of where the disconnect is with a lot of women. They think, okay, just because he sleeps with me, he wants to be with me. No, he just wants, he just wants to add you to the team. Can we be fair and say that? He says, uh, uh, go back to the booty pick. Okay, let me see where the booty, let's, let's see where the, let's see, uh, oh yeah, I'm not, I gotta be careful. She's a stripper, you know what I'm saying? She got, I mean, she got a little onion back there. It ain't anything crazy. It ain't anything, you know what I'm saying? Nah, it ain't, it, yeah. Once you live here long enough here in Brazil, uh, yeah. All right, so we are going to move on. <laughs> we are going to move on, and this is going to translate. This is going to turn into an I told you so live stream because I told you. We, have, we are moving on to the next piece. I told you. This is an I told you so live stream. I told you. I told you that these women are for sale. I told you so. If you don't know who this is, this is uh, um, Aoki Lee Simmons. Okay? Russell Simmons' daughter. Russell Simmons' daughter is out getting cozy with a 65 year old man. And what are we talking about? What happened to, oh, you just gotta run game. Oh, you just gotta have a mouthpiece. Oh, you just gotta work on yourself and go to the gym and looks maxing and all that type of stuff. These women are taking deals. And if you don't remember, you guys remember about a year and a half ago, they, let me get to the big screen real quick cause I gotta cook real quick. You guys remember a year and a half ago, they were putting Russell Simmons' feet to the fire. His whole family, his, his ex-wife and his daughter, they were putting his feet to the fire saying he, he ain't supporting us. He ain't helping us. You know what I'm saying? They, were, they, they did a video of, of a FaceTime. They were recording them during FaceTime, but they, 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 made, they muted out the, uh, the sound. So you really couldn't see what Russell Simmons was saying, but you could see him getting animated in a video, probably cursing them out. And people were saying, oh, he's abusive. He's this and he's that. When in reality is it, Russell Simmons was probably telling her, look, you are a grown woman. That I'm not supporting you anymore. You need to figure out what you're going to do with your life. I was very successful. I was very accomplished. I can provide you the resources to build for you to scale. You can go into the modeling industry. You can do all types of things. But what we're seeing is their default mechanism. What's the default? Selling box. They're going to go back to what they want to do. What you're going to see is, and what you're going to figure out is, a lot of these women do not want to be boss bees. They don't want to be CEOs. They like, they like the title of CEO. Let me move out of the way. They like the title of being a CEO or saying you're a CEO or I'm a business owner. Or I am, you know, a F, you know, a CPA or whatever the case is. I'm a real estate agent. They like the names of all of these prestigious uh, 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 jobs, but they don't like to put in the work. When you go and you look through social media, when you see all these these OnlyFans girls, when you see them and they're like, "Oh, I'm a CEO. I got my own. I got my own swim line." I got my own this and I got my own that. They don't like, you don't know how that business is running. You don't know how it's being managed. It's only, she's a CEO, but she only has one employee, which is her. Right? She's selling like two swimsuits a month. 
Like, you don't know, but they like the novelty. But even here, you can see it here. Look, Russell Simmons cut her off and said, with due respect, you're my daughter, but you are a grown adult. You need to figure it out on your own. And so she said, you know what? I'm going to go back to my default, which is selling box. And I got a 65-year-old male who is going to fund my lifestyle, which you know what? I say, that's fine. That's cool with me. But I want you, if whatever she does, I ain't mad at her. Let me just be clear. Let me get to the big screen. Whatever she's doing, I'm not mad at her. Because this is this, this is standard operating procedure. That's what we call it in the military. You guys know I'm retired Air Force. SOPs, standard operating procedure. They're going to default back to selling box when things get hard, when they want a lifestyle, when they want to go on a trip, when they want a pair of shoes, when they need a bill getting paid. They're going to go back to standard operating procedure. Which is fine. You know what I'm saying? And I want you guys to know the truth. Okay? Now, to be fair, she ain't really my type. Okay? She's a little bit on the skinny side. Okay, yes, yeah, she's black and Korean, but I've, I've seen way better black and Korean girls. She's looking like she's on the anorexic side. But you got a 65-year-old guy. Who's, he's so happy to be with her. And we're going to play a video of them in a second. In the car. You, know, you, you see what I'm saying? She's, yeah, she's a little bit on the skinny side. I mean, a lot of, she's definitely not my type. But that's the reality of the game. Okay? And if you want to support the Cash App, uh, shout out to Anthony in the Cash App. If you want to support the Cash App, the link is in the, uh, in the, uh, in the chat. It's pinned at the top. But here we have her. And her boyfriend, she, her and her 65-year-old boyfriend, she's 21. She's 21, and she's getting pounded out by a 65-year-old guy. But if this was the other way around, if it was Russell Simmons and he had a 21-year-old girl, they would be putting up all the smoke. You would have smoke. You would have more smoke than Smokey the Bear at Yellowstone. Okay? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, but if it's her, it's cool. It's cool, sis. Get your bag. He's a he 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 has money, all this type of stuff. Just chill. They don't mind it. Okay, what we're seeing here in the United States, money is getting tight. Even for women like this, she has a successful dad. You know what I'm saying? She probably ran through her money. And Russell said, "Look, we 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 cutting you off, but we're gonna play the video." Okay, we're gonna play the video and we're gonna there there is some details in this video that I want you guys to pay attention to. Last day in St. Bart's. Um I'm so sad, but I'm very sad, very happy. And when I return home, um everybody who knows me will be getting a happier, more chilled out version of me. <laughs> My boyfriend is checking in. I don't know why we're checking in in advance like this. Probably because I always miss flights. I should just show. Okay. Okay. Okay, so her boyfriend just got in the car. Her 65-year-old boyfriend just got in the car. Okay. And uh, here we go. No creep? Oh, I thought you were saying no. No, I can't. I couldn't. You can't because I don't have my green card. I'm making my final safe cards video. Aww. Would you like to share your favorite thing about the trip anonymously? <laughs> you. Yeah. So he he. So she said, would you like to share the favorite thing about your trip? And he said, you. So he running that old, that old game. He running that old game. Okay. Keep it going. You said me. Do you want me to open the drink? Look, he said, you know, Mary J. Blige wanted to be my partner. Do you guys see that? Zoom in on that. That's. Look, he snitched. This 65-year-old man snitched on Mary J. Blige. He said, 
You know Mary J. Blige tried to be my partner. Mary J. <laughs> Look, every every everybody uh everybody glossed over glossed over that. So you have he's 65 years old. He has 21 year olds after him. He has washed up Mary J. Blige after him. He probably has a whole bunch of other models after him. And we already know what it is for. It's because he has paper. He got money. But he don't care because he's just folding it up. Hey, I'm going to St. Bart's. I'm going to Japan. We're going to Greece. We're going to Spain. I'm going to be hitting it raw. I'm going to be popping it from the side. I'm going to pop it from the back. I'm going to squirt over your face. You know what I'm saying? I'm going to put you in the choke slam. I'm going to put you in a tombstone, figure four, all of that. He don't care. You want my money? Cool. If you want the money, but you're going to do what I'm going to tell you to do. And a lot of women are okay with that. 21-year-old is okay with that. Mary J. Blige is okay with that. They looking for a come up. Even though, they're got, even though they come from rich families, they come from uh, celebrity backgrounds, they all want a paycheck. They all want a man with money. OK. She could have she could have got her uh, she could have got her somebody her age, but she don't want nobody her age because they, they can't fund it, her lifestyle. You're in Mary J. Blige, you to be like Baby, you are on. Shush. Huh? Shush. I'm making this video. Baby, do you want to go to Kenya? Kenya? Someone has invited us to Kenya. Uh, you know, Kenya is not what? Uh, be dangerous. Shut up. Never mind. Shush! When are we going to Japan? Actually... Japan is so... Yeah, so, so yeah, she's talking about going to Japan. My sugar daddy's taking me to Japan. Taking me to Japan. We got invited to... Ki that's, what, that's what they want. Oh, he's taking me to Japan. He's, we just got invited to Kenya. We just did this. We just did that. We're in St. Bart's. She's flexing on Instagram. Flexing on Twitter, a lot of girls are watching this and they're thinking to themselves, she's like, you know what? I don't want a young dude. I want somebody or I want somebody with money and I'm willing to share you for money. He made it clear. He told her straight up, look, Mary J. Blige wanted to be my partner. So he's probably popping her and Mary J. 65 years old. And y'all want to sit here and y'all want to talk to me about running game? Y'all want to sit here and y'all want to talk to me about paying $40 for a piece of box in Brazil? What are we talking about? Bro, this chick is, this dude, in the, there's another video. This dude is taking her to Cartier. He's taking her to Bulgari or Bulgari or whatever it is. She's talking about how she likes Cartier bracelets and all that type of stuff. Listen, you come to Brazil, you go to these other places, you ain't got to do none of that. You ain't gotta you ain't gotta do none of that BS. Here's here's fifty dollars, here's sixty bucks, here's four hundred hayites. You go to go to Thailand, two hundred thousand baht. Philippines. That's where that's where a lot of brothers have figured it out. And to be quiet as it's kept, look, dude. All Listen to me, bro. All of the girls that I deal with in Brazil look better than this. That's the crazy part. All of the girls that I deal with in Brazil look way better than her. They got better bodies than her. They look better than her in the face. They are less entitled. They ain't asking for Cartier. They ain't asking for Gucci. They ain't asking you to fly them to Kenya or Japan or St. Bart's. And so you so that's that's what brothers are figuring out. It's like, why am I why am I going to waste my time? Why am I going to entertain this BS? He can have her. And as far as I'm concerned, he can have it. <laughs> I know a lot of you brothers don't want to hear that, but he can have that. That yeah. I mean, come on now. Think about it. Even Russell Simmons don't want to have nothing to do with his daughter. And you want me to take that shit on? You crazy? Well, you can't afford it, MT. Good. I don't need that. Yeah, we ain't, ain't. Trust me, I ain't losing no sleep over that. Uh, my man's right here. Where he at?
My man, uh, Brian Bourne says, I love Brazil. Been there in Sao Paulo next month. Shout out to you, bro. We, we run in the same circles. Okay, for sure. Uh, my man, Ronaldo, he says, always good info. Thanks. Appreciate you, bro. Thank you. I'm trying to provide the best that I can. And my man says, I'm going to Colombia for my first trip in the Sugar Baby website. I, first trip is the Sugar Baby website out there. Hey, talk to me on Patreon with the Sugar Baby stuff because I don't really... Uh, I don't really diverge all of that really publicly, uh, but yeah, I know how to move and how to shake because all of these women really at the end of the day, we have transitioned and we're, I'm going to show you some more. We have transitioned. They don't want to be bosses no more. Back, but I would say between 2008, 2000, from 2008 to COVID-19, from 2008 to COVID-19 was the boss babe era. I want to be a CEO. I want to um, I want to have my own business. I want to do this. I want to do that. Those were the times. But then COVID hit. A lot of jobs went away. A lot of women lost a lot of money. The savings got wiped out. Now we have entered into the sugar baby, sugar lifestyle phase. And a lot of people get mad at me. You get angry with me. You get you send me nasty messages because OMT, oh, you're trying to promote. I'm just telling you, you guys need to study change management. That's what you you need to study change management and understanding how an organization, when you have policies, when you have uh, uh, directions from the uh, the uh, stock, the um, managerial changes. Uh, border directive changes, company philosophy changes, and there's changes that have to, fundamental changes that happen. You have fundamental changes that has happened in the dating market. Fundamental changes that a lot of guys are stuck in the past. They're stuck. They're thinking things are still the way they are in the good days, the good old days. Oh, man, all you got to do is run game and all you got to do is go to the clubs and all that type of stuff. Notice that clubs are dead in the United States. D-A-D. D-E-A-D. They are dead. Nobody wants to go to clubs anymore. You know what I'm saying? Everybody's on the internet looking for a lifestyle, looking for a hustle, looking to go viral, looking for likes and attention on social media. We have seen a shift in what women want. They're constantly changing. Men have relatively stayed the same. Conservative for the most part. Want to settle down, have kids, have a wife. Women have changed, especially the younger generation. When people come at me and they're like, oh, MT, it's still, you can still run game and you can still do that. When she's 30, when she's 35, 40, yeah, you can still use the fucking game and all that type of stuff. But these young chicks, the young, fresh out of the box, they want a lifestyle. They want a social media lifestyle and they realize that the job that they're going to get cannot afford it. So they want you to pay for it. And we're seeing it here with uh, Russell Simmons' daughter. She comes from money, and she's still selling box. <laughs> like, how? And, and everybody wants to, for, everybody wants to, 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 uh, to gloss over this, but nobody wants to talk about it. She's selling box. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, bro. Look, 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 look at this comment right here. Can y'all see this? Let me see. Let me make sure y'all can see this. Look, look at this comment. Look, look at the comment. Look at the comment that got 9,000 likes, bro. Time to swallow my pride. I'm tired of working. These women do not want to work anymore because they realize I went to school. I got this degree. I got $80,000 of student loan debt. Damn. I'm 28 years old and I've been working since I've been 24 and I'm already tired. So 28, how many years, how many more years does, is she going to have to be working? 38 years old, 48, 58, 68. She has 40 more years until she's roughly retirement eligible. 40 years. These women are looking at this and saying, look, I need to cash out. A lot of women, unfortunately, are not going to cash out. They're going to sit here and they're going to procrastinate. They're going to think, that, hey, I'm in my 30s. I'm 35. I'm still on the dating market. You're going to get passed up. <laughs> These women are cashing out. 
they are cashing out. Okay, and we can see we can see it in real time. Okay, this is all real time. And y'all can sit here and y'all can get mad at me. Y'all can get angry with me. Y'all can fight with me. Y'all can fuck with me. You can argue and bicker. But I'm telling you guys, you need to understand change management and you need to get ahead of change. You need to you need to, you need to be able to forecast a change. See its projection. And act accordingly. All right, but we're going to move on. Look, here we go. We got some we got something else here. This is another situation you guys need to be wary of. And I'm not going to read the whole thing, but this is on The Economist. This was posted a week ago. Why young men and women are drifting apart. The question is why? Why are young men and women drifting apart? It says here, in much of the developed world, developed world, which is mostly first world, quote unquote, countries, UK, United States, uh, your Nordic country, Sweden, Norway, uh, Denmark, you know, in much of the developed world, younger women are becoming sharply more liberal while their male peers are not. These diverging worldviews affect politics and families and more. You know what I'm saying? Women and men, and the women are becoming more liberal and the men are becoming more conservative, which has a clash in ideology. We saw this coming. We saw this coming. And it's not going to get any better. If you, there's charts out there, if you look at them, women are sharp going, women are going off the rails with this liberal BS. Men are holding a line and they're being conservative. They're not becoming liberal too because we know deep down women want a conservative man because the conservative man is going to be the one that's going to take care of you. So it's really, it's really sad. It's really sad. Um, but there's light at the end of the tunnel. I'm telling you here though in Brazil, you ain't got to worry about women and men drifting apart. You see so many couples here in Brazil. You see everybody holding hands, lubby-dubby. Everybody's coupled up out here. You don't really see that too much in the United States. It's a, it's, it is a gender W-A-R in the United States. It's a clash of ideologies. Part of the reason why is because the, the, the way the system is set up in the United States, they have government programs, government assistance to aid and abed these ideologies where you can, you can systematically take the man out of the house. Child support, alimony, food stamps, WIC, Section 8. You got all of these government programs, okay? Hey, a lot of these women, they look at that. That's why they happy. Hey, I can just get pregnant. I can get a baller to sleep with me. I can get a fresh and fit to bust a nut in me. And then you know what? Now I got a baby on the way and now I can cash out. I can vilify them on the internet and I can cash out. That's the way, that's the standard operating procedure in the United States. But I will tell you here, they ain't gonna, they ain't, here in Brazil, they don't have all of those government uh, subsidies and government uh, handouts. That's really a, benefit to um to uh to the united states and the uk you take away the incentives if, if all the if no far divorce goes away if alimony goes away uh if a woman initiates divorce she leaves with nothing if all of that goes away then you will see a a, a, a seismic uh shift in how women are going to operate Right, you give them the play. You give them the playing the playing field. What does the playing field say? The playing field says, "Hey, you can just go out and get pregnant by a guy who gets money, and then you can just collect child support. You ain't even got to worry about anything else." Hey, man, you can divorce your husband, which we're gonna do. We're gonna show, play a video later about a divorcee, and you can. There's no penalty for that. There's penalties in other countries for getting a divorce, but you see systematically okay here we go let's have some fun so who 
hold on. Before we're gonna put a one in the chat. Who wants to go? Who wants to go to? Uh, who wants to go to uh, to England? If you want to go to England, put a one in the chat. If you like British girls, put a one in the chat. Uh, let me know, okay? I'll be right back. Put a one in the chat if you want to go to England. I gotta grab something really quick. If you want to go to England, put a one in the chat. Where we at? Okay. My man Nova Society, he wants to go to England. Okay. You want to go to England, huh? Anybody? Who else? I've always wanted, I want, I've always wanted to go snow bunny hunting in England. Okay. All right. Well, okay. The, the accent is sexy. Okay. Look, I got something special for you then. Hold up. Uh, shout out to my man, Jay Skills. He says, got to drop a super just because you're keeping it 100. I appreciate you on that, brother. All right, so we got a British girl. My man, Wakanda King, says he wants to go snow bunny hunting. So here we go. Here's your snow bunny right here, my friend. They ain't never had a pretty girl from Job. What's up, bro? What y'all think, man? Are we are we headed to England? <laughs> hey man, when we going to England? Hey, we pulling up. <laughs> hey, when we hey. Hey, y'all let me know y'all want to pull up to England. Listen, man. Now you guys know I lived in England. I lived in England. I lived in England for six years. Okay. Uh, if you can live in England for a long period of time, there are some benefits to being in England. Okay. There are some benefits to being in England. Um, unfortunately, there is quite a few of them that be wearing a lot of makeup and they be doing a lot of trickery. That's why I like places, hot environments beach towns like Rio de Janeiro because if everybody's at the beach, if everybody's moving and shaking and all that type of stuff, these women aren't wearing a lot of makeup out here, bro. They are not wearing a lot of makeup out here because it's too hot. You're going to be in the water. You're going to be in and out of the water. She ain't, she ain't going to the beach, bro. She ain't going to the beach. And this is, this is nasty. A lot, but you know what's funny? A lot of you brothers were probably popping. Let's go, let's, let's look, let's go back. Let's go back. Let's let's run it back because uh, let's see what we got. A lot of you, a lot of you, a lot of you brothers. Okay, here she go again. She got that fake tan. That's her boyfriend. Maybe. I don't know. I don't know about this. 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 Uh, this. Um. Yeah. What's up? What's up, fellas? Y'all wanna? Y'all wanna pull up? She's a makeup queen. A lot of you, a lot of you brothers were probably she got some she got some legs on her. She ain't showing her full leg, but oh, that's her that's her boy that's her boyfriend. And you know what? If you like it, I love it. That's her boyfriend. He's seen her on her worst, in her worst. He's seen her at her best. Um, I can just say, hey, you know what? Better him than me. This is just the reality of the game. And you know what? I'm not even gonna jump on the. I'm not gonna jump the gun too much. It is what it is. Uh, if he's happy, if you like it, I love it. And that's all I'm going to say on that. But I will tell you, brothers, um, I would skip out on England. Uh, I wouldn't go there unless you got business there. 
in my opinion. I wouldn't even waste my time there. But I will say, and she, she used to be like a little foldable back in the day. Look, this is 2021. She was a little foldable back in the day. Is she, was she not? This was what, three years ago? This was three years ago. So she was a little foldable back in the day. And that's kind of what goes down. Look at a little, she was a foldable back in the back, back in the day. This is a foldable. It's quiet as it's kept, but she got a little bit on the thick side over here. You, and you notice how the game is played, right? You need to pay attention to how, what you need to pay attention to these women, bro. And I'm just gonna keep it a buck. Women show you what they want to show you. You need to pay attention to what they don't show you. So if you look at all of these pictures, right? They're all of her face. Face, 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 face. She ain't really showing you her body here. It's kind of like she's covered up, right? But back in the day, right? Back in the day when she had that fire little, that, that, that tight little body, she was showing it all over the place. Right here, she got, the, she got it poking out here. You know, she's got it in the bikini over here. You know, um, you know, she just showing, she, she, she used to show it off. Bikini photos here. No more bikini photos, though. They all gone. She got a, she with a ninja right here. You know what I'm saying? Look, well, things have changed, man. Showing a full body here. But yeah, she didn't, she didn't blew up a little bit. And that's really, that's something that you got to kind of be careful of and cognizant of when you're in. Uh, and yeah, you can just tell her face has gotten a little bit fuller. Um, you know, probably because she's on birth control could be, could have some adverse effects to that. But yeah, we just ain't, it just ain't even worth it at this point, man. To be honest with you, to be a hundred percent with you, it ain't even worth it. And you see, yeah, it ain't even worth it, man. <laughs> it ain't even worth it. Okay. So yeah, let's, uh, we're moving along. Should I play this? Let's close that out of the way. Uh, let's go ahead and jump on this. Pay attention to this right quick. Pay very, very close attention to this because this goes in, this goes in line with what I was talking about with the uh, with the um, the marriage, American marriage, the the marriage situation. What number of employee are you of Tesla? I would say I'm probably in the 300s. How good was their offer? Gave us a lot of stock options to start with. I mean, they gave us 40,000 options. My strike price was 90 cents. Oh, no. Your strike price Wait. was 90, 90 cents? 90 cents was my strike price. <laughs> oh, yeah, I was like, at, at 90 oh, cents, who's going to take them seriously? I mean, because I surely wasn't. I mean, I, I was. I love the job, but I didn't take <laughs> At 90 cents, who cares? So, well, I got $40,000, whoop dee. You know, that's all it was back then, but that's $50 million today. Oh, my gosh. So what did you do with those options? <laughs> well, um, I kept them, and then I went through a divorce, and the uh, divorce lawyer uh, convinced the judge that the Tesla was going to go out of business in 2013, and they sold them all. No. That's yeah. the most expensive attorney I think oh. I've ever. Oh, yeah. But it, was, yeah. Well, it was, you know, like whatever, 60 grand or something at the time, but now that's $50 million. I actually <laughs> did some research to see if I had a case against the lawyer, but I don't. Even though he made a, he convinced the judge that the, they were going to go out of business and we we're going to have to sell the stock to pay his lawyer fees. I'm. How often does that keep you up at night? What number of employee are you of Tesla? I would say I'm probably in the 300s. How good? So y'all see that? <laughs> My man lost fifty thousand dollars. I'm sorry, fifty million dollars in a divorce. The divorce, the divorce lawyer forced him to sell his stock options in Tesla, convinced the judge that the price was going down, and um, they sold they sold his his shares, and then he got a divorce, and now he's down fifty million dollars. And as, and he just and you heard what he said. There's literally nothing he could do about it. You see what I'm saying? <laughs> and y'all want to talk about? Yeah, bro. That's terrible, man. That is terrible. And I'm not really trying to scare y'all away from the divorce, but I don't think that. It's just, it's just, it's spooky. That's all I would say. It's just a spooky situation, man. Like, I don't know how, I don't, I don't know if I would be able to sleep at night if I was dude. 
Let me make sure my stuff is. But yeah, bro, I'm speechless. All right, so we you got to send me that video. Okay. Uh so we got some super chats. He says um uh, he says why brothers ain't got updated info on Africa. Um so that is a good question and you could be you so there's there is there's a quote uh from Pharrell. He's basically saying if you want to if 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 you want something done, you got to do it yourself. You can't wait around for people. So if you're scouring the internet and you're like, man, why isn't there enough content in, in, in Africa? Why aren't you guys going to Africa? You, you can take it upon yourself and look at that as an opportunity and add that to your repertoire. You know what I'm saying? We need more content creators. Uh, cello. So you should go to Africa, bring your camera, bring your camera equipment out there and use that as an opportunity. A lot of guys are, are, are talking about how they want, they want remote work. They want to work remote. They want a remote job. There you go. Go to Africa, bring a camera, bring your iPhone with you and start recording some stuff. Go get down and dirty, get um, the information that brothers need and create a business. This is a perfect business opportunity for you. Okay. Uh, my man says, want to hop on and show support. Appreciate you, man. The corner pocket. So, yeah, the corner pocket is right here. Speaking of the corner pocket, bro, I got this Argentinian chick out here. She's a 304, but um, her ish is fire. And she has been in the corner pocket a couple times. You know what I'm saying? Like, she's been, like, I'm seriously considering uh, calling her over tonight. Um, that's a high possibility, but yeah, the corner pocket is always undefeated. Uh, let's see what else we got here. Uh, let me see. There's a lot of African Americans in, um, the best answer to the question. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Be the change you want to see. Um, iPhone, no Android vlogging. I mean, yeah, you can, um, yeah, he says he says Austin was in Africa for months. Y'all didn't support him. Uh, I, I think Austin was getting some support in Africa. He was getting some support. Uh, he says he says I I've been to Argentina. Argentina girls are mad decent. Okay, we'll see. We'll find out. Let me see. Let me see. Like, I don't, I don't understand, like, you can, like, <laughs> he said, like, basically, um, all you have, all you literally, you, all you literally have to do is Google Africa in the, there's, 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 um, there's YouTubers in Africa. I don't understand the whole Africa argument. But anyway, uh, moving along, let's talk about. Let's talk about this. Hold on. Let me see. Let me let me go ahead and let me clear my tape, my tape deck real quick. So we talked about that. We talked about that. We talked about that. We talked about that. Uh, let's talk about let's, let's go ahead and bring this up because this is a this is a contentious argument here. Let's go ahead and bring this bad boy up. Okay, let's bring let's bring here we go. Tell me what you guys think about this. And then in their early 30s, they get really upset because they say, you know, the boys don't want to date me anymore because they're not at their prime. And people get mad when I say that. Well, it's just true. If you're in your early 30s, I'm sorry. It's like you're not as attractive in the dating pool as you were in the early 20s. But again, you have your corporate job and cats. So I thought, you, you know. Already a stat that 54% of black men are unmarried and have no kids. Kevin Samuels just talk about this all the time. 
and 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 there's a multitude of reasons why that's true, but a big part of that is like our women, and I'm not blaming them because we've allowed it and we've put them in position, but our women are so far removed from playing a traditional female role that we feel like we're out of options as it relates to black women. And then okay, so I'm gonna be hold on, hold on, Jason. So I'm gonna be, I'm gonna keep it real with you, brother. We ain't you not out of options. A lot of men in the United States, especially brothers, believe they are out of options. They are out of options. A lot of guys gave up. They said, you know what, I'm gonna go monk mode. I'm just gonna focus on this, I'm gonna focus on that. You are not out of options if you have your passport. If you spread out and branch out, there's more black people in Brazil than there is in the United States. Okay, there are options. And if you don't believe me, if you don't believe me, check out my boy Vibin' with Fred. You guys know Vibin' with Fred? Vibin' with Fred, he got a little, he got, he's out in Brazil. He's in Salvador living his best life, but he has a message for that. Okay, let's play my man Vibe with Fred and shout out to him. Down the states be like, I, I need a man that's six, six five, six six. He got all this, he got all that. Let me show y'all how niggas that's not tall pull results in Brazil, my nigga. You know what I'm saying? Hey. Whoa, 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 whoa. Pause, 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 pause. This is in Salvador, Bahia. We talk about people, black men don't have options. This is an American black dude, and he is with a six foot stallion, thick. She ain't, she not worried about his height or anything like that. You gotta be six foot tall and none of that. She don't care. Baddie. Hey. So, you know what I'm saying? Caesar, what's happening, bro? What's up, Chief? You know what I'm saying? You ain't gotta be a tall dude to get girls in Brazil, bro. You don't, man. You just have How tall are you? How tall are you? Probably five, 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 six. I got the you know what I'm saying? Look, look, look. I got the rings on. Inch and a half. That's it, bro. You just gotta be that guy. You that's feel it, me? Man. That's it. You gotta have it, bro. That's it. Look. Got them Amazon right here. This is Amazon. Amazon. <laughs> How tall are you? Let's go back. Let's go back. Let's go back. Where she? Where her thick? Where her thick ass at? Kissing all on him and part. Bro. And y'all want to <laughs> listen, dude. And y'all want to y'all want and shout out to Fred again. I'm giving him a shout out because I'm using this content. But that's what that's what we're talking about. You. <laughs> You don't have to settle for the BS in the United States. I see it every day when I'm here in Rio de Janeiro. That's just I'm gonna just keep it real with you guys. There's too many, there's too many attractive women in, in Brazil. There's too many. So they say, oh well, the Brazilian men are gonna they're gonna rise up and they're gonna get angry. Dude, the Brazilian dudes here are they burnt out out here, bro. They, you know what I'm saying? Like, it ain't even, it's not even a concern. <laughs> it's not even a concern. There's too many beautiful women in Brazil. There's too many. And you got women that's coming from other places that want to live here, want to stay here, want to hang out here. It's too many. My man found what he was looking for. He went to Salvador, got him a baddie. He ain't the only one. Every brother that I have talked to that has been to Brazil, and it's not just black men, it's white guys, Hispanic guys, Arab guys, everybody who comes and travels to Brazil is going to win. And it's not just Brazil. If you go to Thailand, you're going to win. If you go to the Philippines, you're going to win. If you go to Spain, you're going to win. If you go to Portugal, you're going to win. If you go to Eastern Europe, you're going to win. If you go to Lithuania, Latvia, Estonia, Romania, Czech Republic, you're going to win. Now, to be fair, you have to understand social dynamics. A lot of these women wasn't indoctrinated. They was not indoctrinated with, he has to be six foot tall. He has to be making six figures a year. He has to have a six-inch, a six you know what. 
That's indoctrination in the United States. A lot of these women aren't indoctrinated. They have that. They don't have that indoctrination. They just say, "Okay, I like him. He's cool," and that's it. I bet when he approached her, she didn't even know he was American. I talked to some guys yesterday. They're like, "A lot of these girls don't even know we're American. They think we're from Jamaica. They think we're from Africa." When we pull up, there was a specific. Brazilian, this is, there's, a, there's a lot of Brazilian girls who only want to deal with African men, men from Africa, not African-American, but African men. There's a lot of them because, shoot, half of the population identifies that have some African in them. Brazil has a huge African influence. So, of course, they're going to want some African guys. Here in Brazil... You go around to the beach, everybody embraces having melanin in their skin. Everybody wants to get a tan. You have, I'm telling you now, in my opinion, I think Brazil, women in Brazil have the most beautiful skin in the world. There's a lot of Stacey Dashes out here. There's a lot of lion's mane, uh, racially ambiguous joints. There's a lot of caramels out here, brown skin, dark, uh, a little, a little uh, brown sugar like this one. There's so many beautiful redhead, redhead Latinas. I showed that in my Patreon. I love the redheads, but I do have a redhead, but I'm actually kind of burnt out on popping it. I'm going to have to take a little uh, sabbatical on that. But yeah, you can, <laughs> it, it, it's all here. But, but again, the, the, what people like, Brazil is a gift and the curse, right? A lot of guys want to come to Brazil. You have a lot of guys who want to come to Brazil. And hit the like button if you haven't hit the like button. We got almost 450 people in here. Hit the like button if you haven't hit the like button. Hit the goddamn like button. Okay? Um, you have a lot of guys who want to come to Brazil. But what's but we have a problem. We got a, we have a we have a geographical problem. Brazil is too far away. And people say, "Well, you got a whole bunch of brothers in 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 uh in um in um Going to, going to Thailand, how come dudes don't go to Brazil, bro? You're going to, you, it's a lot easier to get to Thailand than it is to Brazil, and the tickets are probably cheaper, depending on where you're flying from. There's not many direct flights to Brazil compared to Asia. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So we're, I was talking to some guys last night, and they were just saying, it's like, yo, um, a lot of people want to come to Brazil, but they understand that you have to have some time off here. You can't just come here for a couple days unless you're doing some business and then leave. You're not going to want to leave. You know what I'm saying? You're not going to want to leave. And let me see who else I got up in here. He says, uh, 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 going to Bangkok next week. Any tips on how to have a great time there in Thailand, period? Go to my Patreon, bro. I got videos on Thailand. I got a whole... Bro, I have a lot... I have a library on Patreon, man. A, a library. That's why people like my Patreon so much. It's a library of information. You can literally search Thailand in there. I have made it easy for y'all. If Now, let me be clear. If you're trying to go on... If you're trying to use Tinder and Bumble and shit like that in Thailand, maybe it's not for you. But if you want to get into some debauchery... If you want to do some folding, you want to fold some laundry, that's what the Patreon is for. I already know what it is. So me personally, I'm going to just keep it real with you. I like to do both. I'm, I'm, I'll, I will go on the dinner dates. I'll do the boyfriend, girlfriend boy, BS, but I got me some 304s on the sideline. 304s that are fair priced. They ain't on no bullshit. They're coming through. They're getting popped, and they're going to leave. I had a chick over here yesterday. Taking her time, getting getting ready. A lot of these girls, they don't be, they be wanting to hang out and stuff. Can we have some coffee? Can we? Hey, I said thirty minutes. <laughs> she's like, yesterday, she's like, "Can we have some coffee?" No, we can't have any coffee because she, she saw my she saw my coffee machine over here. She's like, "Can I have some coffee?" No, it's time for you to go because I got some video games to play. But anyway, um. Thoughts on brothers going to Argentina with new leadership. So I'm going to go to Argentina, Stud Muffin, and I'm going to give y'all some, uh, some on-the-ground data. I don't have any information just yet. Just stick with me. But 
from what I'm hearing, everybody's saying it's still popping. Okay. <laughs> yes. No, nah, man. Like, yo, she can't. Dude, do we do we got it? I got a whole. <clears throat> do we have to, do we have to do a Brazil story time? Is that what time it is? Because we got stories for days. I got stories that I should be telling my Patreon subscribers. Dude, I said this before, and I'm going to say it again. You live in Brazil. I have been propositioned for a threesome. I get propositioned for a threesome at least once a week. I got propositioned to do a threesome yesterday, and I told her no. And the reason, and here's the problem that I have. It's always one attractive girl. She's fine, and then she got a friend that doesn't look too good or doesn't look good enough to participate in the threesome. Whenever I get two girls that look good enough, then I will participate. But a lot of girls here are on some threesome stuff. Here in Brazil, quite a bit. More than you would think on some threesome. And I figured it out because I'm apprehensive about threesomes, especially in South America, because you hear about guys getting drugged, guys getting robbed in Colombia. Hey, you, two girls want to come over. They must be on some nefarious stuff. But what I realized here in Brazil is that they're not on anything nefarious. A lot of these girls want to do debauchery. They want to do some three or four activities, but they're shy. They're shy. They don't want to do it alone. So they want to be sucking and smashing with their friend, taking turns. Hey, I would rather, hey, I like you. I want you to be my sugar daddy, but I want me and my friend to come up with. We're both going to smash you. You know what I'm saying? Because I'm because I'm shy and I'm nervous. That's how these Brazilian women go out here. They wanted a lot of them, especially when you go outside of Rio de Janeiro. They're getting introduced to the sugar baby lifestyle. They're seeing their friends talk about it, all that type of stuff. They want to get into it, but they need a helping hand. They need a friend with them. So I have, like I said, I haven't really entertained it just yet, but it's happening. But that's a little tidbit. Maybe I said too much. Maybe. <laughs> hey, if you want to, she still has her friend pictures. Let me see if she still got her friend photos real quick. We just put it up. Where's she at? This is her friend right here. Can y'all see that? That's her friend right there. So her friend, she got like a long... She got like a long uh, torso. Well, she ain't bad. She ain't bad, but I don't like it when a girl f tells me, she's like, hey, if we're going to meet, I have to bring my friend with me. When you say that stuff, then I'm like, no, because I don't want, I didn't, I, when I got your number, I didn't want your friend. I wanted you to come through. So, yeah, I was like, well, hey, let me know when somebody else takes you out on that deal. And that's one cool thing about Brazil. You can sit in the pocket. You can sit cool, calm, and collected in the pocket, right? And deals are just going to pop up on your phone. I got chicks hitting me up. Oh, I got a promotion today. Promotion means she's selling a box on a discount, if you don't know. Hey, I'm in, I'm in Copacabana. Can we hang out? I got some hashish. I want to smoke some weed and get smashed on the couch. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, I'm off on Wednesday. Can we go out to eat? And then we're going to come over and watch. I'm going to come over and I'm going to watch Netflix and you can blow a load in me. Yeah. That's what it's going to be. Let me see. I got a cash app. And shout out to the cash app gang. Shout out to Craig. Craig Spencer's always been supporting. Again, Anthony, shout out to you too, bro. You know what I'm saying? You coming through with the heat. Um, let me see. I'm going to see if I got this. So where's she at? Bro. <laughs> Yo. Oh, here we go. This is a good question. This is a good question right here. Skyler, Skyler, Chris, here's a question. Do you code approach? Do I code approach? No, I do not code approach. 
I do, I do not code approach. I do not code approach. I don't code approach. I think code approaching for me is a waste of my time because I have access already to some of the most attractive women in Rio de Janeiro. Let me give you an example. You have to understand how economics works. Your most attractive women, the most attractive women in certain in, in the United States and even in Latin America, the most attractive women, she's beautiful. She is going to leverage her beauty. If you are smart and you're an intelligent man, you're going to leverage your intelligence. You're going to be a chemist. You're going to be building engineering. You're going to open up a business. If you have business acumen, naturally gifted business acumen, you're going to start a business. If you are naturally gifted and you're beautiful, you can be a model, but it's up to somebody else to pay you. So you're going, especially in Latin America, where there's a lot of beautiful girls, the women are going to be leveraging themselves, man. They le they're leveraged out here. There's too many beautiful girls in Rio de Janeiro, and I'm telling you, overwhelming majority of them, if they're very, very attractive, they are sugar babies. They are. And they're on specific websites. Dude, I walk the streets in Copacabana. Yeah, I walk the streets of Copacabana, and I be recognizing so many people. I say, okay, I've seen you before. You selling box on the websites. I've seen you. I've seen you. I've seen you. They be with a mama in the gym working out. She's in the gym with her mom. Because a lot of these girls in Copacabana, they got money. If, you, if you're living in Copacabana, these girls are living with, in Copacabana with their family, right? But... Her dad, same thing with fucking, uh, the same thing with Russell Simmons. The daddy is not buying you all of the stuff. Yes, you live in Copacabana. Yes, you have, you coming from some family, a family with some money. But daddy ain't going to be giving you money all the time. You're 21 years old. You're a grown woman. So what do these women do here in Copacabana when they come from a quote unquote rich family? Bro, this chick came over to the crib. She was Gucci'd out. It was real Gucci too. Like, I can see, I can tell. Had on Gucci perfume. I knew, I smelled her. I'm like, what you, what you, what are you, what kind of perfume you wearing? Oh, that's Gucci. I knew, you, she smelled like she had some money, but she was selling box. And I, yeah. And she sat, she sat right here and she's like, uh, I don't want to watch a movie. She wanted to suck some dick right off rip. I was like, you know what, let's hang out a little bit. You speak English, you know what I'm saying? Like, you know, let's chill out. She was ready to get smacked up. <laughs> uh, dude, I told y'all already. Look, I got three cell phones, dog. I got three cell phones. I got three cell phones, dog. I don't, bro, y'all talking about code approaching. I got three cell phones of girls talking to me. I don't got time. I don't got time to be cold approaching, man. You can, and, and you know what? If you want a cold approach, that's cool. Ain't nothing wrong with it. You can do, it's like, it's like an RPG game, right? When I came to Brazil, it's an open world RPG. It's an open world RPG, right? You could, there's a side quest over here. There's a side quest over there. There's a side quest over here. Or you can just hang out. You can go fishing. You can do this. You can do that. Or you can go on the main quest line. You got, you got some characters that you can do quests for. Like, that's exactly what, that's exactly what being in Brazil is. So you can do whatever you want to do. But I'm telling you, if you live here, if you stay here long enough, you're going to be overwhelmed. You're going to wake up and... You're going to look at your phone and you're going to see all of these girls wanting to hang out. And you're like, damn, I don't got time for all of this. I don't have time for this. I got YouTube I got to do. I got Patreon I got to do. I, I want to go to the beach. People are messaging me, hey, let's go to the beach today. DJP, hey, man, we're going to Rasta Beach. Can you hang out? I'm like, man, come on. And then I was like, well, look, let me smack something up first. And then I'll go to the beach. And then there's girls that I really want to pop, 
but they disappear. Like, there's a couple of them in my phone right now. I'm like, yo, where you at? Where you at? And then they come back at, the, at a time, oh, I'm sorry, I was busy. Can I come hang out with you right now? I'm like, yo, you, we got to plan this out. It's all over the place out here, bro. <laughs> This motherfucker asked me to do our cold approach. Bro, I got like three phones, man. My phone is, my phones be blowing up. It's just, some of you ninjas be blowing me up. Sal, a chick from Sao Paulo. Uh, yeah. A, a white one from Sao Paulo, too. Hey, hey, Sao Paulo got them white Latinas with blonde hair. You know what I'm saying? With the green eyes. You know what I'm saying? Hey, I'm coming to Rio de Janeiro. I'm going to be staying with my friend. Are you gonna have time to come see me? Or I'm, you know what I'm saying? Like, yep, you got. I got. I can make some time for you. They be checking in, asking in advance when they come into town. I told y'all if you and my Patreon, there's a blue-haired uh, Brazilian that I, what well, she has, she dyes her hair blue. Uh, and you and she's one. She used to be one of the usual suspects, but she hit me up today randomly. Haven't heard from her in months. Talking about I miss you and I want to come back to Rio de Janeiro because she's in Minas J Ice, which is not too far from here. Oh, uh, this is I haven't talked to you in like three months, and now you're talking about you miss me. Now you're talking about you wish you didn't lose contact with me. You didn't really lose contact with me. You just stopped responding to the messages. But she got popped up. And, yeah, the blue hair joint. You scroll down in my uh, um, in my Patreon. There's a whole there's a whole information on the blue hair joints. But yeah, <laughs> we could talk about Brazil all day. He says, "Can you turn up your volume? Who's having trouble with the volume?" He says, uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. We are on the move. But anyway, let's keep going. I just had to give y'all like a little per perfunctory real quick. Let's see what's going on in Japan. What's going on in, the, what's going on in Japan? Black dating experience in Japan. Man versus woman. Let's talk about that. Who's... Who's having, who, who wants to go to Japan? I want to go to Japan. We got, a, we have a brother in Japan. We got uh, Will I Am in Japan. <laughs> we got Will I Am in Japan. And he's about to talk to y'all about the dating experiences in Japan. Now, I'm going to just tell y'all, uh, before I play this video, there is Japanese women in Rio. They got Jap dude. I got recognized by a Japanese dude walking from the gym. He's like, "I know you," and I'm like, "Oh yeah, what's up?" He's like, "Man, you look you a lot shorter in person." I'm like, "Yeah, hey, what's up? It's cool." He's like, "Hey man, thank you for your channel. You know what I'm saying? You're really really cool. Like I like watching your channel." So Japanese dude, they got some Japanese people floating around here in uh, Rio de Janeiro, but I need to go to Sao Paulo, I need to go to Liberdade, and I need to get me a thick uh, Japanese chick. I, I'm gonna tell y'all right now, if I, if I find me a Japanese girlfriend in Brazil that looks good, pretty feet, thick legs, Chung Lee legs, yabba yabba yabba, spinning, fur, spinning bird kick, hey, we out of the game. At least she's gonna be the main thing, but yeah. They got they got the Japanese joints here in Brazil. So that's one that's another good thing about Brazil. And what is Will I am talking about? Let's see. Dating here in Japan. Yeah. I don't know why people say that uh -huh. oh it's, it's it's impossible for a black guy. Yeah. Oh, they don't like them. There will always be someone here for you. They might not be with you for the right reasons. Uh, so that's what they so he needs it. So this is what this is what I don't like. And I'm stopping and I'm playing this video. You black people need to get off of People wanting to quote unquote fetishize you. Who cares? If a woman wants to fetishize me, who cares? If I'm in Poland and she ain't really seen any ninjas before, and she wants to see if the if the uh, if my D I C K is big, I'ma put it in her mouth. I'ma put it in her mouth. I'ma try to choke her out. 
I'm gonna put her head, I'm gonna put my fucking head down. You wanna figure it out? You curious about it? Okay, there's nothing wrong with being curious. But white, black people only come up with this up. They try to stop using these black women's talking points. They fetishizing you. The women in Japan, they just want you because you, because you're black and because of your skin. They don't really want to be with you. That's where it starts. If you got a fetish, if you like something, if you're curious about something, try it out. But don't be coming on here using these these female talking points, bro. They may not be with you for the right reasons. He's tiptoeing around. The nigga is in Japan, still in a mental prison. They, they, they gonna fetishize you here, but just be careful. That don't stop you from fucking them, nigga. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? That ain't stop you from doing that. They, they, might, they, may, they may not be with you for the right reason. That don't, that don't stop you from hitting it raw, nigga. Anyway. I mean, if you're not a weirdo, if you're not a creep, yeah. if you're, you know, a, a decent guy, you don't right. even need to be a decent guy. Right. There's always going to be a cockroach hunter. Cockroach hunter? There's always, a, if you oh. go to Rapongi, uh -huh. they'll, they'll just show them your skin color, show them the fact that you are black, and yeah. they'll be like, oh, okay, this is the aesthetic I like. First, it was a mix of guys being like, I've never... Okay, here we go. Here we go. We got a sister girl. Hold on. Stop, 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 stop. We got a sister girl here, okay, and she's in Japan. And you know what? If you like it, I love it. If you're in Japan, if you're a sister girl, if you like Japanese dudes, I'm cool with that. But she's saying, this is what the Japanese men are saying. Let me see if, can y'all see that? Japanese dudes are saying, I've never dealt with chocolate before. So the, so the, Japanese, this, the Japanese dudes are running that J Japan game. That's the, that's the Japan game. Japan. That's all. The, the men in Japan understand the, the, how these black women are. He, you just run up on them and just say, hey, I never had chocolate before. That's it. These Japanese dudes are not going up to these, these black girls. Excuse me, miss. How you doing? What's your name? My name is uh, King Joe. Uh, I'm from Rapungi. Uh, can we be friends? Can I take you out for some ramen? Can I take you out to the sushi market? We can pick out a tuna. He ain't doing none of that. Look, bitch, I never had chocolate before. And that's his game right there. That's it. She told on herself. <laughs> she told on herself. She told on herself. It's right there in front of y'all face. And if you're feeling what your boy MT is saying, <laughs> drop a super chat, drop a cash app. But yeah, we're going to continue on with this. What this nigga Austin talking about? Shout out to Austin Holloman. He says, a fetish is cool for sex, but not for a serious relationship. Here you go. <laughs> What's up, nigga? Uh, he says, a fetish is cool for sex, but not for a serious relationship. We're waiting for you to have a serious relationship, Austin. Let me know when you, when, it, when, it, where, where, <laughs> when are you going to have a serious relationship? We ready, we ready to see that. Because you've been playboying around for too long in South America, bro. It's time for you to settle down. Okay, we ready for you. We ready. We ready to see your serial relationship. <laughs> ah, but shout out to you. Hey, I'm gonna be in. Like I said, I'm gonna be in Dallas in a month. If you're still there, we can definitely link up. Dealt with chocolate before. Yes, chocolate a bunch before. of guys called me chocolate, but apparently that happens to a lot of girls. One Japanese dude actually told me I thought that black women were more sexual. Like you guys always want. Who told you that? And he was like, because when I said, oh, I want a relationship, he was like, relationship? You do? I thought you wanted, and it's like, wow. when did I give that indication? Dark skin. Mm. You want, right? There you, hold, hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up. Oh, there you go. <laughs> wait a minute. Hey, wait a minute. There he go. There he go. Look, these Japanese dudes. These Japanese dudes are approaching these women and literally just saying, look, you dark skin, you want S-E-X, right? That's, that is the Japanese, listen to what these, Jap look, how, look at how these Japanese dudes are approaching these women. And y'all over here run, trying to run game and, and trying to, uh, you know, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's right there in front of you. These Japanese dudes are not trying to pull 
any of the stunts. They ain't trying to pull any of the stunts. <laughs> you ain't even trying to... <laughs> Uh, he said, he said, you want, right? Like, the stuff that's been told to me or asked to me, like, I literally had a guy in the club come up to me and he was like, are your was black? Uh, what? That's what they do. Look. Look again. And this is how we know Passport Bros is winning. Right? Look. These Japanese dudes, they go into the club. <laughs> we, they go to the club. And that's their pickup line, bro. That's their pickup line. Are your nipples black? That is the pickup line that they're using in Japan, bro. And y'all want to sit here? Y'all want to talk about? <laughs> it's all right there. It's, she told on herself. She told on herself. Now, I wouldn't suggest you do that. I wouldn't suggest you go up to him and say, hey, what, what color are your panties? Or what color is this? Or what color is that? Hey, are your toes done? Take off your shoes. You can't do that because you're going to be labeled a misogynist. They're going to they gonna lock your black ass up. And you're going to be on social media. You're going to be on the shade room. They're going to put your black ass on baller alert. Okay? You can't, you can't do what these Japanese people do. And that's just the reality of the game. But anyway. A lot of people from the US or other countries, they come to Japan just to find a girl, right? Yes. Does that actually exist here in Japan? It exists in the sense that Japanese people are more accepting of mm. social rejects. Japanese people are more acceptable of social rejects. So when he says that, he's talking about the Western, the westernized society of how Japanese women um, or how American women feel about don't use don't use American westernized America to to figure out what a social reject is. I don't I ain't buying that. Means if you're a loser back home, <laughs> you can come here and find someone who actually thinks you're cool. Doesn't mean that they all think you're cool. Yeah, yeah. But like some... And you're probably not going to be cool. But <laughs> you're more likely to find someone. You know what? You're British. I like Harry Potter. Yeah. Let's go out on a date. Whereas yeah. that's not really going to happen in, in the UK mm -hmm. if you're not really popular. So yeah. definitely easier to appeal to them mm. simply because you are different. Oh, I'm white and I have curly hair. Yeah. Oh, Harry Styles. You being black. Do you think it helped dating scene here in Japan? It helps me stand out. Like, oh, okay. I can walk into a room and then they'll be like, Oh, we know I am. Oh. <laughs> we know yeah. I am. You got me exactly. like, exactly. No, I got Floyd Mayweather, actually. <laughs> You know, you can be the only black guy in the club, start yeah. dancing, and everyone wants to join you yeah. because you're like the only black guy there dancing to hip hop. And it's just right. like, oh my gosh, a real authentic black guy is <laughs> here dancing hip hop. I can't believe it. Like Will Smith is actually here. <laughs> As a white person, you have a little bit more of a chance of appealing okay. to broader. the wide, broader, exactly. Yeah. But then again, there's a problem with being niche is mm. the fact that you're more likely to get fetishized. Here he go. Here he go. You're, you're gonna be fetishized. So white people don't get fetishized. Everybody, if we're gonna play, I don't, I don't really like the fetish, the, the fetish game. I don't really, I don't really like the fetish game. I do not like the fetish game. Here we go. Yep, that's a good point. He says black, he says black women fetishize black men too. And this man, this man going, this man is going to, <laughs> this man is going to Brazil, I'm sorry, going to, going to, uh, like this is, this is, this is my problem. This is my problem. Why, if you're so concerned about being fetishized, why is your black ass in Japan? Why aren't you in Africa? Why aren't you in Somalia? You know what I'm saying? Why don't you why don't you go to Kenya? Why don't you go to uh Nigeria if you're so concerned about being fetish fetishized? That's 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 why a lot of uh black people piss me off. Man, you're gonna get fetishized. Well stay get your black ass out of the country then if you're so concerned. <laughs> it's it's that simple, dog. Like what are we doing?
Just just uh stay home. <laughs> just just stay home. Yeah, this whole this whole fetishization thing and it's and it's not like you guys are going out and getting married. You just having fun. Most of the guys who are going and moving and shake make moving and shaking. He says he's not complaining. He's not cons complaining. I think you misunderstood him sharing his observations. No, I'm I didn't I didn't I never said he was complaining. I'm just saying that when you go to a homogenous country and you are a black man and you know there's not a lot of black men in that country. There are going to be women who are curious about you, but that's not a fetish. It's just like when you go to school, when you was in high school, and it had the new girl came in from out of town. She came in from, a, she's from another country. You ain't fetishizing her because you didn't even really, you wasn't really checking for it. But you were curious because she's new. So we, we're getting this whole fetishizing BS. It's only black people that say that. You don't hear white people going around saying, they fetishizing me in, in, in Japan. I'm being fetishized in Japan. You never, I've never heard a white person say they are being fetishized by anybody. Never. But anyway. If we go to a club in Rapongi where mm. all the women are into hip hop, and yeah. then it's just like, oh, I love your style, yeah. but it's not necessarily I like you. Yeah, I, here he go. He's basically saying, I like her. Here, look, 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 look what this ninja said. Oh, I love your style, yeah. but it's not necessarily I like you. you. Yeah, we got some, we got some, we got some, we got goofy, some goofy ninjas in in Japan. That's really what it boils down to. Goofy. That that goofy, the goofiness. She likes she she may like her style, but she don't like you. No, ninja, she likes you. <laughs> like, I think I think a lot of brothers be trying to do they they making things more complicated than what they are. You know what I'm saying? But anyway, where else are we at? Moving along. <laughs> he said, yeah, they get they they bring in the they they bring in trauma, bring in the trauma to uh to Japan. You in Japan, you living in Japan and you bring your trauma with you. I'm being fetishized here. They don't really they like my style, but they don't really like me. They're like, man, shut your stupid ass up. But anyway. We, <laughs> yeah, we got, we got another foldable here. Okay. Uh, what we're seeing now is these women are starting to choose up. We got, we got, we, these women are, the, 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 we're, 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 we're going full circle with this whole passport bro movement. Brothers getting their passports, moving and shaking. We're going full circle. Okay. So let's take a look at this just because you haven't found the right person yet doesn't mean you will in your country but you might in argentina so yeah what are you waiting for just okay so w w what is this what is this we got a woman from Argentina. What'd she say? Because you haven't found the right person yet, doesn't mean you will in your country. But you might in Argentina. So yeah, what are you waiting for? Just because you haven't found the right person yet, doesn't mean you will in your country. But you might in Argentina. Ah, where's the play empty play sound at? Hey, they doing promos now. Listen, they're doing promos. That's what I said. Everything is going. 
It's going to, everything is going to happen full circle. They're doing promos now. Hey, if you, you don't have to worry about your country. If things aren't going right in your country, hey, you can come to Argentina. Where's the, where's the pushback at? I don't, I don't, I don't see, I don't hear or hear, I don't see any pushback. Put a, put a one in the chat if, you, if we got hey, any of you brothers going. Is she recruiting exactly, Jeff. This is a recruitment. This is a recruitment video. Hey, you know what? If things aren't going good in your country, you can come to. You can come to. With something. He, my man says it sounds suspicious. It, it may sound suspicious because English is not her first language, so she's probably reading off a cue card. You don't know what she's doing. And shout out to my man, Digital Davis. He says, sorry, I only got $3 in my bank account. So my man, Digital Davis, sent me $1. He only got, he sent me $1 on Cash App. He said, I only got $3 in my bank. So I'm happy that you gave me one of your dollars. That's some real, that's some real stuff right there. And I can respect you for that. You got three. You gave your boy MT1. Appreciate you, Digital. Uh, Yeah. So this is a foldable. Let's just keep it. Let's just keep it what it is. And she, I can look at her and tell she got some pretty feet. She got a nice little tan. She might have like a little. She got this big Bane jacket on. Uh, Bane from Bane from the uh, Dark Knight Rising, which is cool. Okay, but yeah, this is definitely. She's choosing up. These women are starting to choose up heavy. Okay, you're gonna start to see. A lot of these women, they're starting to realize, hey, I can get into the algorithm too. I can get into the passport bro algorithm too. I can talk about how men should be coming to uh, Brazil or Argentina, and I can make content and I can make money off of it, which they're going to start grifting. But it's going to be a slight grift. It's going to be partially true, and they're going to try to make some money off it too. So you're going to definitely see a lot of this going on soon. A lot of girls are going to start grifting on the internet telling guys, hey, come to Argentina, come to Brazil, come to uh, Mexico, and, you know, we can have a good time, and, you know, the women here are feminine and all that bullshit. Okay, let's see what else what else we got going on. Okay, so, again, do I, do I want to play that? Do I want to play this? Let me see what else I want. Uh... Already got that out of the way. I got my man vibing with Fred out of the way. Uh, I ain't, do I want to play this? All right. Since we since we got a lot of heat on Japan, a lot of you brothers are getting antsy about the fetishization in Japan and all this bullshit. We got some more Japan information. We got some more Japan stuff. How hard is it to find a SEX partner in Japan? How hard is it to find a partner in Japan? We got the Japanese girls. They doing, they doing some chit chat. Y'all ready for that? And you brothers are, you brothers are looking out for the, uh, he says, can you turn up the stream? Hey, man, you're going to have there's something wrong with your headphones, bro. Because I don't see anybody else complaining in the chat except me. Y'all need to turn up the volume on your, on your set over there. Because <laughs> my, my mic volume is all the way up. <clears throat> but anyway. Um... Let me get the light over here. So how, how hard is it to find a sex partner in Japan? Now, this Japanese chick is a foldable. She has her mask on. But I'm going to just tell you something really quick. These Japanese chicks are some of the nastiest on the planet. And I, I love, like, I, I, have, I have an affinity for Japanese women. But does that mean I fetishize them? No, but I like Japanese because when you when I think Japanese, I think origami, I think foldable. I've had a couple of run-ins with some Japanese girls. They got some tight punani, 
okay? Very, very tight. They be, they be getting, they be on some nasty debaucherous stuff. They be putting, they be doing all the nasty stuff. They are nasty and they're, and they're friendly and they're sweet. They got honor and dignity and all that type of stuff. So, um, yeah, she is definitely a foldable. But does that, just because I want to pop, let me ask you guys, just because I want to pop some Japanese chicks and I want to pop them more than everybody else, does that mean I fetishize them? Am I fetishizing Japanese chicks? Or do I have a preference? パートナーを見つけるレベルが上がっちゃったと求める意識 brought down the economy and if you understand japanese the japanese economy the japanese economy peaked in the early 90s the nikkei and it tanked all the way down for 30 years and now it's back to its previous high so it took almost 35 years for the economy to uh after a decade a decade of negative interest rates so Jap japan has been propped up by the u.s for a long time but anyway it may have led to women to want a man who is financially well off. Look, these women, I told you, even in Japan, she said it right there. Look, the women in Japan, COVID-19, we want a man that's financially well off. They want a man that's financially well off. But that means a lot. That means a lot. Financially well off translates to other things. Financially, financially well off can mean in a lot of these when a, when a woman overseas says she wants a man that's financially well, financially well off, that means code for American too. Hold up. That's cold. I know American men make more money than Japanese guys. So I, when I say I want a dude that's well off, I want a guy that can take care of me, that is talking about you as an American. A lot of women want a man that's well off. But when we look at countries who, are, who the men have the most wealth, it's American men. So that's why I'm saying it's, it's probably the same thing in Japan too, or in South Korea too. They looking for a man that can take care of them. Japanese dudes be working, they be working 90 hour work weeks, ain't got no money. Same thing with uh, Korean men, they ain't got no money. Now I'm gonna be, I'm gonna, I'm gonna give a little pushback. They are. Not America. They so the difference. This is not Americanized. Saying you want a man, saying you want a man that is well off. That's not Americanized. That's practical. That's just like me saying I want a woman that's very very attractive. That doesn't mean that I'm Americanized because I want a super attractive woman. That's just what I want, and that's what most men want. That's natural. Wanting a man that's well off is natural. So stop saying it's Americanized. That ain't Americanized. Americanized would be if she got on social media and she started talking stuff about Japanese dudes and how they ain't ish and they they need to be making six figures and they need to be doing this. She's not on any podcast airing out her dirty laundry, talking about how many dudes she slept with and she's a boss babe. She ain't doing any of that. That is Americanized. She was stopped on the street. They asked her a question. She said, I want to do this financially well off and she went about a business. So don't, you have to put everything into context.
Okay? But, again, this is the reality. You, this, if you go to the Philippines, a lot of these women want a man that's financially well off. But that's when you're going to have to do your ninja math. I told y'all the ninja math, economics ninja math. What is a man that's financially well off in Japan? What is a man that's financially well off in Brazil? How much money is that per year? Is it $60,000 a year? Is it $70,000 a year? So you have to put everything into context. You got to look at the U.S. dollar. You have to look at how the purchasing power of the U.S. dollar in these other countries. What is financially well off? You go to Poland making $60,000 a year, you're financially well off in that country. So when she says she wants a man that's financially well off, that means you. You see? You brothers ain't really digging deep when he's and not looking at the numbers. Y'all thinking, oh, she's Americanized, so she must want a dude that's making $200,000 a year. No. <laughs> No, man. You gotta you gotta look at the numbers. It's a lot more, it's there's it's more nuances than that. Okay. Hold on one second. Yeah. Hold on, my little my little blue haired Japanese, my, my blue haired uh, Brazilian. I say, look, send me a picture of you. I just want to see a photo of you, man. Come on, let me see. Uh, let me see. You don't take. Let me see. Yeah, you little freak. Hold up. Give me a second. But yeah, let me see. Let me see what y'all. I got. I got some super chats. He says, "Try Vietnamese women. Thank me later." Viet Vietnam is a hidden gem. Vietnam. Hold on. Hold on. You want to I'm glad you talked about that. One second, my friend. I got something saved for y'all. I got some I got I got we got to talk about this. Hold on. Hold up. Where is it at? I knew I saved it. Where you at, girl? Hold up. Y'all want to talk about Vietnam? Let's go. Let's go. Let's go talk about Vietnam. So here we go. Bookmarks all. Here we go. Come on, man. Play, 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 play. Okay, so we got Blazing Love. Let me see if her page pops up. Okay, so speaking of Viet, Viet, Vietnamese, speaking of Vietnamese, there's a lot of brothers who are who are sad right now because their favorite uh, Vietnamese OnlyFans girl has gotten pregnant and she had a baby. And as you can see, she says she's Vietnamese. She's 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 from Vietnam, right? A lot of brothers are curious about chicks from Vietnam. Right, she looks good. This is a this is a little Vietnamese three hundred four. Okay, somebody got her pregnant, which is cool. Hey, she got pregnant. She had a little baby. People are in the comment section. A lot of simp's in the comment section trying to figure out who the baby daddy is. Is the baby is the baby daddy black? He's got to be black. You had it's so sad, man. So that's sad. You had there's a lot of there's a lot of simp's in the comment section. Look, 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 look. look. She got pregnant. She got, and this is what you, and this is what you got to deal with in the United States. I'm glad you brought this up, Stub Muffin. You got a lot of brothers in the United States and white dudes in the United States that are super simps. You got a super simp pandemic. Y'all thought uh, the pandemic was over, but there's still some strands going around with some with some simp stuff. Look, look, this is 
father is probably African African American descent. Why are you? Why do you care about the father of a Vietnamese woman you never met? Just because you was jacking off to her, now you think you got some type of ownership. I always wonder if they hide their pregnancies for peace or losing followers. And then you got another dude right here. He says, "Congrats." Let me guess, black baby. They just bitter, bro. That's crazy. And I'm gonna just be real. I'm gonna just be real with you. This alone right here will make me go to Vietnam. Where she go? You know, yeah. What, hold on, where she at? There she is. There she is. That's that's every that's every brother's dream right there. Now you, I, I don't think you're gonna find like she's been in the gym and stuff like that. But there is a lot of fine Vietnamese girls who may not have access to all of the different makeups and uh, you know uh, Kylie Jenner lines, and she got her lips done. You know what I'm saying? You can see she got full lips. She got the hair. Her hair done. She got her eyebrows done. Um, she got she got her fake teeth, veneers. So she looks westernized. What I'm saying is, if you go to Vietnam, you will be get you will get a budget version of this. She ain't gonna have all of the bells and whistles from the westernized society, but that's fine with me. You know what I'm saying? There's a lot of brothers that be following her and be living and be leaving simp comments to her. And I just say, look, just go to Vietnam. She put it. I just want to. Hey, where are you from? You from Vietnam? OK, I'm going to Hong Chi Mai right now. We pulling up. Me and the boys. And we just going to be popping out there. That's what. It, hey, one of my bosses, man, one of my bosses in the Air Force, he married a Vietnamese woman. And he literally begged me like during one of our meetings, one of our weekly meetings. He's like, listen, Skylar, you need to take your ass to, to Vietnam. Like, I know you've been to Thailand, but you need to go to Vietnam. They got them out there, too. If you got the Asian persuasion, the Asian fever, this is a lot of Asian fever right here. And you know she got some pretty feet, too. You already know. Your boy MT, where she at with the pretty toes? There they go. Right there. Yep. But, yeah, that's what you, this is, she got fake teeth, manicures, eyelashes, extend, eyelashes, eyelashes, eyebrows done. Take all of that away. Let me get me a fresh, a fresh eye of the box with none of the additives. That's what you're gonna get in Vietnam. You know what I'm saying? She's pretty. I'm gonna be honest with you. She's beautiful. She's beautiful, but you can look at her and say, "Okay, you're from Cali. I want a Vietnam. I want a Vietnam, a pure bred Vietnamese joint like this that that does not speak English." And I guarantee you, out of all the millions of people in Vietnam, you will be able to find one. And she ain't going to have 343,000 followers. She's going to have 6,000 followers in Vietnam. And a lot of the Vietnamese, a lot of Vietnamese guys probably ain't even checking for them like this because, you know, Asian men don't be liking these thick girls like this. This is what ninjas like and a couple of white boys. But this is... Like this thickness and stuff like that. There's a lot. There's a, there's some thick Asians, but a lot of the thick Asians in Japan, a lot of the thick Asians in Korea, they don't be getting checked for by the uh by the local men. So when you pull up and you like, she's fetishizing me. She's fetishizing me. No, Nick, because that you her only option. She's thick. She got a big booty. Japanese men don't want that. They want a pancake. And she all up on you when you in Japan and you thinking she fetishizing you, but you ain't realizing that, look, she ain't really got many options. Yeah, I forgot about that. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I've been, I lived in, I lived in Asia for six years. There's a lot of girls in Asia who come out and they say, look, I got thick legs. I got a little ass on me, but the local dudes ain't really feeling me like that. But brothers be showing me some love. Brothers come, brothers in the military, they come out here, they be showing me some love. And you're going to sit here and say, well, she's fetishizing you. You black men are the only ones showing them love. So it's, out of, it's reciprocal when you pull up in the club and she's showing you some love back. And you be like, oh, man. You know what I'm saying? (laughs) 
<laughs> oh yeah. But yeah, that's a that's that's what brothers want. That's what brothers like. You know what I'm saying? We know what it is. We know what time it is. Okay. Did I did I get some super chats? Okay, we got my man Zan. He says, if the father is black. She's going to lose 90% of her white male audience. White men think they own Asian women. They hate black men more than they even hate. Yeah, I mean, I wouldn't say they think they own them, but I would say that they get, they're, getting, they're getting more and more butt hurt. Let's just say that. They're getting butt hurt. They're starting to realize that... Um, they're starting to realize... Hold on one second. <clears throat> Hold on. It could be. OK, so, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like they they getting butt hurt. Basically, what what we're seeing is is that, and a lot of a lot of women, on a global scale, are looking at it and they're saying, "Look, I want me a ninja." There's a lot of beautiful, and that's there's a lot of beautiful girls that only want black men. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And that's just the reality of the game. Now that you know, it is what it is. You can't have them all. You can't go on one side and say, "Man." You know, they're all most Japanese women want um, uh, uh, white dudes, and then complain when the baddies like this only want ninjas. You got You can't have your cake and eat it too. You can't have it all. Yeah, so let's. Where, where are we at? We got any more debauchery that's going on? Any more debauchery? You know what I'm saying? Uh, uh, where's, where's, where's the questions at? And yeah, this live stream is going to be demonetized, by the way. <laughs> <clears throat> Where's my little redhead at? Hold on one second. My uh one of my assistants is messaging me. Hold on one second. One of my assistants is messaging me. Speaking of which, I have a lot of people that work for me. We're trying to build some shit. Uh where is all the comments at? Where's all the comments at? Where's all the... Damn, man. These comments are just blowing up. I'm about to go back and read all these comments. 
But y'all, but y'all can get it, but y'all, but y'all can get an idea on how your boy be cooking. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <clears throat> Uh, he says by you or YouTube, uh, probably YouTube. I'm just going to go ahead and just demonetize this, 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 uh, this live stream now, man. Your boy, your boy is cussing up a storm, calling people names. You know what I'm saying? I'm trying to get added to the partner program. You know what I'm saying? On, uh, on here, you know? So yeah, we didn't we didn't we didn't cuss up a storm. I gave y'all the heat. Uh... All right, let's play this. Is this a, like what's going on with this? And y'all gonna don't get mad at me, but look, this is we had we had to address this. So we have a woman with a full beard. We have a woman with a full beard that says it's hard for her to find a man. Like, what are we, like, what are we doing? No one's going to marry you, Hernan. Like, you have a beard. No one's going to date you, Hernan. You have a beard. No one's going to be your boyfriend, Hernan. You have a beard. You are not a preference for a lot of men. And then I'll get, um, like, really feminine men message me, but that's not who I'm attracted to, Hana. Mm -hmm. I like really masculine men because I am, I am very soft. Uh, uh, I'm so different to what you see, like on TV. You know, on TV. I've never seen you on TV. Have you not? But no, generally, you'll see. Oh, she's strong. She's, you know, what she's talking about is very powerful. Whatever people say. But then at home, I'm very quiet. You know, I'm, I'm very feminine. I'm very soft. People don't get to see that side of me. You know. Um, but no, it has been difficult. Where I wanted to be married and have kids, I would never be a single mom. That's not what I've ever wanted. No one's gonna marry you, her mom. Like you have a beard. Mm. No one's gonna date you, her. You have a beard. No one's gonna be your boyfriend, her mom. You have a beard. You are not a preference. Like what's going? Like what are we doing? <sighs> <laughs> What? Hmm. He said that is what. He says, "What are we talking about?" So yeah, I mean. So yeah, we uh <laughs> things are just getting out of control, man. Like you got a woman in the UK. You got a woman in the you you got a woman in the UK talking this talk um with a beard complaining about men not want her. This is just this is just the insanity that we got that we're going through, man. <laughs> this is the insanity that we got we going through okay a lot of Uh-huh. It's cuckoo crazy. <sighs> All right, so I think I think I'm done with the uh with the with the debauchery for now. Um I will just tell you you guys I have a I have I'm going back to the United States for a couple weeks here shortly. I got some business I gotta take care of. And then I'm gonna move. I'm gonna do some moving around. I'm not gonna announce my plans just yet. Things are still on the um, 
I'm still trying to figure things out. But Brazil is undefeated. You saw all of the botchery here. You seeing all the craziness that's going on in the United States. If this live stream didn't help motivate you to get your passport, start traveling, start looking at other options, I don't know what will. I don't know what will. Okay? So I'm going to, he said, what, what once he recognizes bearded chick from his days deployed in Iraq. Yeah. <laughs> Let me make sure I got all the super chats. I think I got all the super chats. I appreciate the super chats for the night. Um, if you are in the Patreon, I got, I got, I got stuff in the Patreon as well. You know what I'm saying? Show you, you can show some support over there. All right. Um, that's the library of files. Okay. But yeah. I'm going to wrap this video up, this live stream up, and I'm going to see you next week. I got more videos coming. All right, guys. Peace.